Hello, children. It is I, your friendly neighborhood rave. You remember me? The guy with the terrible freaking haircut? It's still here. It's still happening. We're still covering it up. Only those who saw me on tour this past summer have gotten the chance to see the monstrosity atop my head. And that's how it's going to stay until it grows out. I uh, have the biotin to make sure that it grows out quicker. Anyway, today we're going to make a video that I wish I saw uh, a while ago. As I just mentioned, I went on tour recently for the summer and I did a string of acoustic shows and they were a lot of fun. Now the cool thing about touring is you get to travel a lot and usually you travel by car, it's the most cost effective way. But with gas prices being what they are, it didn't really make that much of a difference whether I was gonna go by road or by air. So naturally I chose by air. It was faster, it was more convenient and it was just plain old easier. Or was it? See, the big thing about traveling by plane is how they're gonna transfer your luggage. Now this past tour was just a solo acoustic one for me. So that means that it was just me and my guitar. Super easy to transport, but it gets dicey when you try to travel with your guitar, especially on planes. So what is the solution? How do you prepare? How do you get ready to travel with your guitar via airplanes? What are the things you need to know? What are the ins and outs? What will help you travel safely with your guitar to ensure that you and your guitar get to your destination on time and in one piece for you and your guitar? Is there a resource out there? Can somebody help us? Will anybody lend a hand to all the working class musicians who want to travel and even the hobbyists who want to travel with their guitars? Is there a source that can teach us what to do, what to expect, what to know? It is. It's Red Shell's video. It's in the description. Red Shell explains everything. I'm not kidding. Red Shell made a great video about this that everybody I think should check out, especially when it comes to flying as a musician with your guitar on a plane. He goes through the ins and outs fairly comprehensively and I highly recommend everybody watch it because that was the video that I based a lot of my travel on. He is 100% spot on. Check out that video. What I'm gonna be doing is giving my opinions from my experience with that knowledge in mind traveling on tour. So check out Rhett Scholl's video first and then come back to my video if you want because I'm more or less just kind of like adding an expansion to his video. I'd also like to preface this by saying that I was traveling with a GS Mini Taylor. Let me show you what that looks like. Don't mind the open flap here. I'm gonna close that later. I got some stuff to put in later. This is the case of the GS Mini. It's basically like, kind of like a 3 4 size guitar, but it's not a standard sized guitar. It's probably, I'd say maybe five inches shorter than a guitar, maybe less. But it is smaller than your average guitar. It is shorter than your average guitar. But I like this guitar and it was perfect for touring because it was easy, more compact, more portable, and it had a great sound. This is the size of the guitar and it was exactly what I needed. This was gonna be my first time traveling by air with a guitar, domestically anyway. International flights, I'll get to that in a second. But domestically, I've never traveled with a guitar, so I didn't wanna risk anything. That's why I figured, let's take the JS Mini, it'll be safer. The reason I chose flying by air instead of driving place to place was because, well, if I may voice my opinion on touring, I think a lot of the damage on people's bodies, musicians' bodies especially when they're touring, happens during the travel process, happens in sitting in those confined seats on a van, on a car, you name it. That's when you do the most sort of, again, for lack of a better term, damage and harm to your body. It's so easy to get stiff and tense, especially the longer the drive is. It's not natural for people to sit that long. I wanted to avoid that, so I chose flying instead. So based off of what Rhett said, I can agree on the following points. You gotta be polite, right? You're gonna be talking to a lot of the gate agents there and they're working a job. Don't make it harder for them. If you're nice to them, if you're courteous to them, they will show you that same courteousness. Being nice and going out of your way to be nice to them really does go the extra mile. You see it in the airline staff's face when they're talking to somebody before you and then they talk to you, especially if you're approaching them with a positive kind energy, they will return it. Have a sturdy case. That's important too. I was not too crazy about going with a hard case for my guitar. One, because I didn't really have a GS Mini hard case. And two, because the GS Mini case that comes with the guitar is fairly sturdy. And I took some precautionary steps like wrapping the headstock of the guitar in bubble wrap. You never know. Again, just to make sure I'd minimize any impact were it to come to that. Because ultimately, you never really know what the situation is going to be when you do go flying. So the name of the game when flying with your guitar is to get overhead bin space. And half the battle is getting your guitar onto the plane. Because nowadays, most planes, most modern planes anyway, most twin jet planes, I had to look this up, trust me. Most twin jet airplanes will have big enough overhead bins to fit your guitar. It's just a matter of, first of all, getting onto the plane. Rhett makes a good point about being courteous to the staff, being nice to them, and also, also, this is huge, 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 huge. When you get to the airport after you've already checked in, try to check in beforehand. It'll make life a lot easier and smoother. So when you get to your gate and you're speaking to the airline worker, try to be as nice as you can, try to be as polite as you can. 
And the key thing you want to ask them is, hi, I have a flight today and I was hoping it would be possible for me to board a little earlier because I have a guitar here and I was wondering if I could get it into the overhead bin space a little earlier. Thankfully, all the airline workers that I came across were very kind and very supportive, understanding all that and allowed me to board earlier to get overhead bin space for my guitar. I was able to board a little earlier and then snag an overhead bin right above my seat every flight. It worked without fail. So that brings us to the next point, right? Will all guitars fit? Now, as I mentioned before, I traveled on this tour with a GS Mini, and a GS Mini is smaller than a regular guitar. So by nature, it made traveling with this particular guitar a lot easier. I was able to fit in every overhead bin space. So one of the things I learned is that, again, for all of the aircrafts that I was on, I looked up what type of aircraft they were, like what they were called. They were all twin jets. So one was a Boeing 737, another was a Boeing 717, another was a Canadair Regional Jet CRJ900, another was an Airbus A321, two Airbus A321s, and lastly, another Boeing 737. So I was fairly lucky in that all those planes, those twin jet planes, all basically had space in the overhead bins for my guitar. And most of them had enough space in the overhead bins to accommodate an actual full-size acoustic guitar. However, there was an instance with a particular A321 where it was one of the Airbus 321s and not the other, funny enough, where they had in their overhead bins like a, uh, a partition, a separator. And if you had a full-size acoustic guitar, it would have made it kind of difficult to shimmy the acoustic guitar in the overhead bins, unless you kind of like have the the neck of the guitar and the guitar case kind of poke through one of the partitions because they have like a whole thing. But for the most part, it's doable, or at least it was for me. One of the additional benefits of traveling with a GS Mini is that because it is a smaller guitar, it takes up less space within the overhead bins. So you won't really feel like a jerk for taking up too much space in the overhead bins. I mean, when I put my guitar in the overhead bin, there was plenty of space for plenty of other bags, depending on the size, of course. Would I feel comfortable traveling with a full-size acoustic guitar? Possibly. I wouldn't rule it out, but I would make sure. I would make sure that I'm flying on a twin jet plane because anything other than a twin jet plane probably wouldn't really have enough space in the overhead bin. Probably wouldn't even have a big enough overhead bin to accommodate a real sized acoustic guitar. Another point I want to talk about is the airline services themselves. In Rhett's video, he talks about basically how he has no intention of ever flying with the United Airlines and American Airlines because of how they burned him in the past. I flew Delta mostly and they were really cool. They were incredibly accommodating. There were flights where they saw me walk onto the plane, onto the aircraft, and one of the flight attendants uh, who were already on the plane, they kind of looked at me and they were like, we have a, a closet in the back in case we don't have any overhead bin space for you, which is very nice. And I looked at the closet and it seemed like it could fit the GS Mini and probably it would have been a tight fit for an acoustic guitar, but it would have probably fit. But I opted for the overhead bin space simply because it was closer. I didn't have to go to the back of the plane or wait for everybody to leave to go to the back of the plane and get the guitar and leave essentially last. But yeah, the Delta crew, very sweet, very kind, very accommodating. I also flew on Sun Airlines, same thing, very kind, very accommodating. But I was like, you know what, let's put Rhett's stuff to the test. And I flew American for one flight. And that was the flight where <laughs> I had airline workers who were a bit less friendly, like they were less warm. I can't say they were mean, they weren't, but they were a little less friendly. <laughs> Take that how you will. I'm just putting it out there. Another thing to consider, especially when traveling with your guitar, again, because we want to get overhead bin space early, we want to board the plane early because we have a guitar and we'd like to claim overhead bin space earlier. It's easier to do that with Delta because of how they work their boarding process versus American, for example. Case in point, with Delta, the way they work is they have like their priority members who board first, then they have uh, special needs people who would take longer to board. And then I think they have like first class and military, I believe, and then just regular people. So that's essentially like four or five classes of boarding and they will fit you somewhere up ahead. They will probably put you in with the uh, special needs because you have a special need, which is your guitar that needs overhead in space. With American Airlines, it's a little different because they have nine different boarding classes. So they have from one to four, I believe, is like first class, military, et cetera, et cetera. Five is where they start with like regular people, depending on, I'm not even sure what, but I was able to get, because again, I, I approached them nicely and they were very accommodating. They put me in with boarding group five, which is the beginning of like the regular people, I guess you could say. So a thing to keep in mind is with Delta, you have less people boarding before you than American. Sometimes if there's a lot of people on the plane who are in groups one to four, it might screw you over. I can see how that can happen. I'm not saying it has happened to me, but it's a rational <laughs> a worry. And to be completely honest, I was not expecting to get overhead bin space on any of these flights. I was completely ready to 
essentially have my guitar damaged. I was ready for that. I was mentally preparing myself for that, you know, preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. Thankfully, the best case scenario happened in every situation. So that's great, you know, knock on wood, knock on wood. Where's the guitar? We like knocking on wood here. So in, I guess in summation, what I'm trying to say is if you're gonna travel with a guitar, get there early, be nice, Try to get overhead bin space as early as possible, you know, by approaching the airline worker at your gate and asking them politely if you can board earlier because you have a guitar that you'd like to get overhead bin space for. That is like 80% of the battle. At that point, they will let you on with the guitar. And the only issue would be, will your guitar fit in the overhead bin space? That's where things are sort of like kind of out of your control. I can't exactly feel comfortable recommending people bring full size acoustic guitars because acoustic guitars range in size and scale length and what have you, especially when they're in a hard shell case. It increases the length of the guitar. It increases the length that you will need from an overhead bin. So I can't comfortably say your acoustic guitar will fit in every overhead bin. But I will say that when I put my GS Mini into the overhead bins, there was plenty of space left over in a majority of the flights. If you are flying on a Boeing 737, there's gonna be space. Again, if you claim the overhead bin space early. Big shout out to everybody at Delta Airlines, Sun Country Airlines, American Airlines. I wanted to get a good a good uh, a variety here. And yeah, they were all very kind, very super sweet. And funny side note, prior to my flights, I would hit up, you know, Delta Help Service, American Airlines Help Service, like they're, they're online people, even Sun Country. They were kinda no help. <laughs> I don't wanna say they were they were useless, but they didn't really know. I'd have one person, for example, on the chat help tell me, yeah, your guitar will fit in, whereas another person on the phone line of their support service telling me it won't. That was a little nerve wracking, but I went in hoping for the best and the best turned out to be the case. The heart shell case. Ha ha ha. Final notes, I guess another thing Rhett mentions in his video is don't overpack and don't pack anything suspicious in your guitar case, like guitar tuner winders or anything that might look suspicious like pliers that are string cutters, because that kind of can be, depending on again, how nice the people, the TSA workers that you're encountering are, they'll give you less of a hassle if you just don't include that stuff in your case. Keep your case fairly bland. I only kept a, a tuner, some strings, and a guitar cable in my case with some papers as well. But that's about it. Again, anything to not set off any alarms, you wanna make their job, the TSA worker, the gate agents, you wanna make their job as easy as possible as well. Also, Brett makes a good point about not checking your guitar. You don't wanna check your guitar. I don't care what case your guitar is in, just don't do it. Unless you have a travel case and you're a touring band and you're shipping out travel containers, legitimate tour containers, tour boxes. I don't know their exact names, but unless you're having road gear shipped in that, don't check your guitar. There have been plenty of horror stories about people's guitars getting ruined. You don't know where it's gonna go through. You don't know what it's gonna go through, whose hands it's gonna enter. You don't know the level of care that the airline worker that will hold your guitar will bring to your guitar. Don't risk it, do not check it. The reason why you want to bring the guitar with you is because you want to put it in the overhead bin space so that you can have it close to you and know exactly where it is and how it's doing. You don't wanna check it with your luggage and you don't wanna have it be gate checked either. There was one instance where I was flying Delta actually and one of the ladies who was a gate agent was telling me the guitar might be uh, gate checked if there's no overhead bin space. And I told her, oh, well, this is actually a travel size guitar. It's specifically made to fit in overhead bin spaces. And she was like, well, turn around, let me see. And I turned around and I showed her. And she's like, okay, well, I'm gonna give you the pink tag just in case. And the pink tag means it's gonna get gate checked, which means once you get onto the gate, they will take your guitar, check it. And in a perfect world, they're supposed to put it in like a special section of the cargo load of the airplane where they have like valuable items, uh, fragile that's being shipped in that plane. So it would go in that section. But again, you don't know exactly what's around the guitar. You don't wanna take that risk. When it's in the overhead bin, you put it there, you know how it's doing, you know what's near it, who's coming near it, etc. Case in point why you don't wanna have your guitar be checked, my luggage was checked and it got a crack. <laughs> So do with that information what you will, put two and two together. But again, between the two, between gate checking and checking your luggage, gate checking is better because it is going in a safer place, a safer part of the plane, handled by one or two people, one or two hands, shouldn't be that much of an issue. Right also in his video talks about TSA pre-check and I've had some friends also recommend that to me. Essentially in America, what we have here is called the TSA, which is the Travel Safety Administration and they make sure that everybody who goes on the plane is safe. Safer flight, meaning not a danger to anybody else. Very important work that they do. I personally have never done TSA pre-check because I go to the airport early, at least two hours early. I'm, I'm one of those guys. And I allow them to uh, search my guitar if they need to. That only happened during one particular flight and it wasn't that big a deal. They were super nice, super calm. The most important thing to remember is while they're checking your guitar, don't freak out. Yes, it's an expensive instrument. Yes, it's something that you want to keep safe, et cetera, et cetera. But understand that they are just doing their jobs, 
be patient with them. If you see them manhandling or whatever, let them know, obviously, politely. But I thankfully didn't have to deal with any of that. They were fairly nice with my guitar and, and, with, and to me. So again, I think the energy you give is the energy you get back. That's some life advice right there. And Red also mentioned something about a coat closet. Again, as I mentioned, those are nice. Those would be always great to ask if they have. I would never go to an airplane assuming that they have a coat closet for you to use. Again, in that particular instance where I mentioned that I boarded a plane and a flight attendant saw me with the guitar, they offered me to put the guitar in the, in the coat check. They offered, I didn't even ask. I didn't ask because I didn't expect for it to happen. Try not to expect for a coat closet to be offered to you or to be available even to you. You wanna get the overhead bin because at least that's a sure shot. If not, then maybe a coat check. And this is particularly for domestic flights because I did fly once completely oblivious to how difficult it was to fly with a guitar. I flew internationally on a 12 hour flight and I had my guitar with me. I took my guitar. I look back at that moment and go like, wow, you were very lucky. I went onto the plane. I boarded, no problem, big acoustic guitar. And I asked them, hi, is there anywhere I could put this? And they were like, yeah, yeah, we'll put this in our closet. And they put it in their coat closet. And I'm like, great. Well, I was a kid at the time. So <laughs> the fact that that happened didn't make me think anything about like, oh, it's probably really hard to fly with guitars. Internationally, I think because it's a longer flight, they have to have bigger planes and those bigger planes tend to have more space. But again, I wouldn't even advise that. I don't feel comfortable saying that because that only happened one time and I was, I think I got lucky. So uh, again, that's something that you'd have to look into as well. And aside from just keeping your guitar always on you or keeping an eye always on your guitar, that is kind of it. Traveling with a guitar isn't easy, but it makes traveling a hell of a lot of fun, especially if you're doing shows with that guitar. Would I travel with a full-size acoustic guitar in the future? I think I would. But another thing to keep in mind, especially when you're touring, just the nature of touring means your, your gear will get banged up. Something will happen. Road wear is a term because it's a real thing. Funny enough though, I should mention that because I was the only one really handling my guitar and I was my own guitar tech, my guitar was kind of cool. It didn't really have any dents, marks, or scratches or anything on it. So knock on wood again, knock, 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 knock. Can't really go into these kinds of situations with all the unknowns expecting the best. You have to prepare yourself for the worst. Thankfully it came out for the best. I hope that this video helps you out somehow. If it did, please give a like down below, subscribe for more videos coming soon, eventually, and I will see you in the future. All right, stay safe, travel, and do so with your guitar. You'll have a lot of fun.